back to my channel so i'll be showing you guys how to make this romper um, that ties to the back um so for that i'm going to first start with the bottom and then to make to cut the shirt what you need is just the hip measurement and the hip measurement i'm working with is 54.4 so 54.4 you're going to divide your hip measurement by four so for me that's going to be 13 point uh 13.7 so that's somewhere here so i'm going to just mark it down 13.7 so first um the the length of the pant i'm working with is going to be uh because it's going to have ruffle at the end so i'm going to work with 13 right now um it, it's supposed to be um it's supposed to have ruffle at the end so i'm going to work with 13.5 at the moment so guys the next measurement i need is my uh, uh crotch length which is like so i'm going to measure from my waist to the hip so just sit down on the hard floor and then a hard surface then measure from your waist down to let's say you're sitting here then measure down to that so that's the length i need so for this i mine is about uh 11.5 inches that's what i'm working with here because it's supposed to be high-waisted so there i'm going to curve it and down here i need about three inches which is what i have here three inches and how i got the three inches is just basically that same 37.5 that i have here 37.7 sorry 13.7 that i have here that's when you divide your hip measurement by four right whatever you got so 54.5 divided by four so what I got was 13. And so to get your crotch, which is this line that goes in here, to get it, just divide that measurement that you have here. That's that distance that you have here into another four. So that's how you're going to get what to be your crotch here. So for me, that was three. So I used three here. I'm not going to give any seam allowances in this front panel. All my seam allowances will come at the back pattern of this pant. So then the next thing I'm going to do is the waist measurement divided by 4, which is 10. The waist measurement I'm working with is 40 divided by 4, which is 10. I'm going to add extra 2 inches here. And then I'm going to try to curve it down and blend it with the hip, right? So I'm just going to try to curve it down here. The only reason why I added 2 inches here is because I'm going to be attaching the top part of this uh, to directly to the front. The top part of this uh jumper to directly to the front part of this jumper bottom directly here because the romper doesn't have any back um the top part of the romper doesn't have any back panel so because the front panel is going directly on top of this back panel uh, on top of this front panel of the uh pant of the shirt so i have to make the waist to be exactly the same waist as the top part of the bumper so that's why i added that one inch here and then you blend it down to the waist so now that i've done that i'm going to just go ahead and cut this out so guys i've gone ahead and cut out this pant the shorts so i'm going to just trim out the part from the waist right and then that way i'm going to open up the waistline also so you see this is what the front panel looks like so now with this front panel of the shirt i'm going to go ahead and trace out uh the back panel of this shirt so i folded my fabric placed the pant on top so remember we don't have any seam allowances yet from this front panel of the shirt so now we are going to add all our seam allowance at the uh, back So guys, now I've put the front panel on top here. So I'm going to use this front panel to trace the back. As you can see, the fabric is also into two again. So make sure I have my about three inches here. But this time around, I added about, I made it 3.5, right? I added half an inch for seam allowance here. So that's from the market from the distance where the end of this front one stopped till there. So after that, you're going to come in here and put in, now you're going to add your seam allowances. So you're going to add two inches all the way all the way from like from the end of this front of the uh this center of the uh, front panel of your shirt you're going to just go ahead and put in two inches on the back panel and then when you get down to this point here you're just going to give it a curve right so this is now the crotch of my uh of my back panel and then from here you're going to make sure you go up about 2.5 inches up if you're more on the smaller side maybe two inches will be enough for you but this is um 
like extra large so i'm going to just go up about 2.5 because remember you want it to cover the um uh, the boards and like uh, and, and also i'm going to put in my uh band so i'm going to add a band at the waist so i can be able to pass my elastic so that's why i need extra two inches to contain the board and then considering i'm going to also have my band so i think this 2.5 inches is going to be enough for me if you want if you feel like you're, you you might need it to come up more you might need to make it three inches it depends on you so i'm using 2.5 and then from there you're going to just bend uh, like place your ruler or whatever you're using and make sure you connect this end to this to this point here right you're going to connect the two together so i've marked mine and it's connected now and then from there I'm going to mark it down again right connect it down so now i'm going to cut it out this is basically my back panel remember for the front i added two inches uh, on the waist here one inch is going to be my dart and then one inch is just because of the uh, seam allowance from the top bodies that is that is going to be added here so i'm going to cut this out now so guys, I want this at the end of this pan to have a little curve. I don't want it straight this way. I want it to go up a little bit. So I'm going to go up by about three inches here and then curve it down, right? So I want it to come down this way on the tie. I don't want it to be square at the um, end here. So I'm just going to go up by three inches. It depends on you how much you want to go up because remember, I'm still going to add my ruffle here. So I'm just going up a little bit so that the flake comes down this way on your tie instead of just being straight. So I'm now going to cut this piece out. After this, we're going to cut the top part of the flay. So guys, I've also gone ahead and cut out what I'll need for my ruffle. So this is what I have here. I have just a lot of this uh, piece of fabric. So I'm just going to go to the sewing machine and join it to the end here. Just split it as i go but that's after joining my pants together so you see i have a lot of it here but the width i'm using is about four inches right that's including my seam allowance so i'm going to fold one inch uh and then i'm going to have um half an inch for my seam allowance half an inch for sewing uh this to attach this to the pants and then the other one inch is just to fold the rough end so that would that will leave me with about 2.5 inches of flay because remember half an inch is to attach this to the body and then one inch is to fold the rough end of this ruffle so that's basically it for the pants right now so guys we'll go ahead and cut the top part now so i'm working with bust of 44 right and 44 divided by 4 that's going to be 11 right so that's why i folded my fabric into two remember this doesn't have a back panel it doesn't have back panel so i have 11 inches here so this is the 11 inches then you're supposed to add extra two inches to it right these two inches is for all the ease and maybe all the seam allowances you're going to need so just add the two inches there so the next thing we're going to do is that you're going to have about half an inch here on the at, at the center right you're going to have half an inch here just mark it to know that because you're going to be joining it at the center because it's going to be v neckline but you're going to be joining it at the center so the next thing you're going to do is also mark that half an inch here so after marking this my half an inch right this is going to be my seam allowance for the center part so what you're going to do next is start from that half an inch that you've marked and then measure out your shoulder so the shoulder i'm working with is 16 divided by 2 that's going to be 8 but I'm going to remove one from it because remember this is going to be sleeveless. So you want the sleeve to be inside of your shoulder, not at the edge. So I'm going to be working with seven now. So I've marked the seven here. So then after that, come down here, maybe come up by about 1.5 or one inch on the dots, right? At the other end, right? And then you're going to just connect this to that 1.5 inches that you've marked. So I'm going to just connect mine. If you have a ruler, that's better. Just connect yours to that line. So you see, I've connected mine. And then the next thing we're going to do now is to come back here on this. Because uh, normally, if this is your normal body, right, you just draw in your shoulder, drawing your armhole, drawing everything, right? This is what it would normally look like. 
and then you're going to come up here and mark your one inch for your shoulder slant right and then you're going to connect it because see i've marked about three inches from this my half an inch you're going to mark three inches just like your normal bodies connect it here and then you have your shoulder slant so what you're going to do is from this your mark of a uh, this seven inches that you marked here and this three inches what you're going to do is to find what i did here is so after marking your shoulder slant the next thing you're going to do is whatever inches you have between the neckline and the the shoulder down the shoulder here you're just going to divide, find the center so for me i have four inches so i'm going to mark the center of the four inches which is the two and then i'm going to mark one inch on this side and then like half an inch on this side so i'll have about one inch distance it depends on you if you want your sleeve the top part of your sleeve to be about 1.5 then do this do it just mark about make sure that the distance is up to 1.5 so i think mine should be about 1.5 here yeah. so that's what i have here so the next thing you're going to do is connect this blend this one blend this side of the um 1.5 inches into this line right so this is now the new side the new outer part of your shoulder and then you're going to also this one here is now the center which is going to be your neckline so it depends on you how deep you want the neckline to be so i want this one to go down up to about 15 inches which is here so i'm just going to curve it and come down to about 15 inches so the next thing you're going to do is the next thing you're going to do is just so now the top is basically ready so you're just going to add in about half an inch for your seam allowance just slightly mark half an inch on this so you know is your seam allowance right mark half an inch all the way down so i'm done now i'm going to cut it open so you guys can see so you see i'm cutting at the half an inch that i left after that i'm going to cut down my shoulder slope and then after that you're going to go from the side here and cut all the way down all the way up sorry so you see i'm cutting this here and i'm still following that line so now i'm going to chip this off so when i'm going to use this to trace out my lining so just so i'm sure of where my center is i'm going to notch this here i'm going to notch the center part here so i'm going to trace this out in a lining and then when i'm done i'm going to give it close up this part so i'm just going to show you guys as, as we go so guys i've gone ahead and cut out what i'll use i've cut out my lining and then i've also cut out what i'll use as the strap so as you can see i think it's about four or three points uh five inches so i'm going to fold it here and then close it up so just make like a strap this here just like a belt this is going to be about 48 inches length so after that you see what this looks like so what i'm going to do this is my center part here you remember i left half an inch to close it so all i'm going to do now is just to go back to the sewing machine and then sew it close right um the reason why i want to have this line at the center is because remember the front of the pants has a line in this at the center here because this is the front of my shorts right it has this seam here so i want this to look nice and just blending so that's why i gave it half an inch at the center here you see so when i close up this half an inch here it's going to blend in with this seam that is here so i'll know that this is the center of the top of my uh, romper so i'm going to it's going to blend in with this center and then i'm also going to give it a dart because if you look at the shot you find that there's a dart here there's a dart here so this center seam is going to fall in place with this center line because as you can see i've went i've gone ahead and joined the front of my jumper jo uh, joined the back also and then gone ahead and put in my ruffle but i've not closed up the crotch so that's the the next thing to do is i'm just going to go back in and close up the crotch from the inside Going ahead and attach this join it to the lining so you see just join the two pieces of the front together the two pieces of the lining together and then join it all the way on the sides the neck and then join the the straps together so now i'm just going to flip it right out out so guys this is what it looks like i've gone ahead and attached the front you see i attached the front just to the front of the shirt itself let me flip it so you guys can see so this is what it looks like you see the two sleeves coming up from the lining and then this is what the um, end here looks like so you see my dart connected to the dart here and then the joining at the center 
so the next thing i'm going to do is when i'm done i'm just going to put just pinch out um halfway through here just give it a little dart here just a little dart on each side here just so that this side is not open so it holds the bust in you see so i'm just going to pinch out halfway to about like maybe eight inches up pinch it out and give it another dart here so the last thing i'm going to do now for the shot is just take this piece of cloth that I, I cut and then make a band for my elastic the one on the picture that i saw online has zip at the back but i'm making mine with elastic so i'm just going to use this and pass elast um make a loop for my elastic so this is what the front looks like at the moment so you see this is what it looks like this is the v and then this is it here you see here so that's it for now so guys as you can see i've finished you see why i said to put a dart at the side you see it's giving this like a bust shape like somewhere you can put the bust you see so this is why you you have to go back and put in just a small dart by the side it helps to close out the side of your bust so it's not open and then as you can see i've gone ahead and finished up the back putting my elastic so basically when you pass your elastic you then close it up again you see so after putting my elastic and um, through the band i just continued my stitch you see continued my stitch up till the top here so this stitch now joined to the front part so you see this is where my elastic is by the side it's closed up on the two sides you see on the other side the same thing that same stitch that went through the side of the pants goes up all the way you see this is also the side of the top so that's basically it so if you wear it you just tie it anyhow you want to tie it so that's basically how you do it thank you guys so much for watching uh please like share and subscribe bye